All right, so for this video, I, I want you to grab a filbert brush, which is like a round top brush. This is what I like doing the galaxy effect with, but you can also use a square brush. I'll show you how you can use both. This is how I like to do my blending for painting a galaxy sky. So I want you to, you know, experiment with me. One thing that people do is they use too much paint at once. So my first tip is to, you know, start with the blank canvas. No water. If you use too much water, it will make your paint harder. It, it kind of doesn't work very well for layering because it makes it wet and kind of sloshy and it, it's harder to blend. Um, but usually I'll start with like a light color, maybe like a yellow and a white mixed together using the filbert. This is a number eight filbert. And then, you know, choose a spot on your canvas and then practice a little bit, moving in a circ circular motion. And usually I'll move the brush around until all of that paint is spread out and there's like literally no chunks or anything left. Nothing. Like it's, my, my brush is starting to run out of paint. Notice how the, when I go over here, nothing's coming off. So make sure before you add more paint that there's no more paint on your brush and you're spreading it all the way out. So there shouldn't be clumps in this, in this paint either. Make sure you're spreading it. And then you can change your shade by adding just a little bit of pure white to it. So notice how I can go to the top of that and then make it look lighter. So now notice how I have a little bit of a lighter color up here and then it gets a little darker. Now the whole point, like the whole goal of a galaxy is to create as many different shades as possible to make that look kind of cloudy and interesting. So usually when I'm working with the yellow and white, then I'll grab in my red when I'm ready to change the shade just a little bit. And then now I have some stuff that looks a little bit orange. Same thing, I just get a little tiny bit and then I rub it in. Right on top of that other color. Sometimes people, it's like they're afraid to layer on top of the other color so they'll put orange like somewhere else. No, mix it into the yellow parts. So you should see some of the first shade that we did and then you can see some lighter shades and then again I can take some more white and then I can change this. Color. So just a little bit of white over that is going to change the color, change the shape. But you should have these like circular brush stroke motions. And then you have this kind of building of color. And you can even take some pure yellow. That's going to change it. So the more shades, the merrier. Using the white to make things look lighter. And then using like a color, for example, if I'm working with yellow, red, and white. You're using the red to make everything look darker and then use more white to make it look lighter. So it's just a, a fun little dance of color. And then you would start to use maybe some pink. So I'm moving into just red and white only. And again, that can go over the yellow, which will create some like stuff that looks a little bit orange but it also creates like a pink color. So the more red I use, and the more I move away from yellow, the more it's going to look pink. But I still wanna rub it into those colors a little bit so that those colors aren't completely separated. So notice how I take the paint, I put it in its spot, and then I pull it into the other color. And it's such a small amount of paint. I think that that's the biggest thing that gets people is that they use too much paint for this technique. Because see how if I have a lot of paint, see this is like kind of a lot, it's all gunked up. It goes so far, so watch how much ground I can cover with that until it gets completely dispersed. It's kind of a lot. You don't think it's a lot until you have it on there and then you're like, oh my gosh, now I have to deal with that. Like I have so much paint on my brush right now. So notice I'm spreading it all around. <laughs>
And that's okay though, because look, I have these tie dye colors, which looks cool. And then I can take in some more white and even break up the color a little bit more to change it in some spots. So all you need to do is make sure your colors look different. I like to go around the edge of my colors. So if I have a lot of red somewhere, I'll go around the edge of that and add a lot of white and kind of mix it into the edge so that it slowly kind of disperses from this darker red into this lighter color. So that is a really easy way to move from one color to another. So notice how I can have maybe more yellow down here. And I'm still just playing with red and yellow and white. And when mixed together, those paints look orange, <laughs> peach, pink. So you have all these different colors that are coming out. And it's just a little rub, 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 scrub, scrub, scrub. Imagine you're scrubbing your sink. It's very gentle. It's very relaxing. Just 45 minutes of painting reduces your stress like, like crazy. So keep that in mind too. Now I know some people use like a sponge and, and stuff like that, but I like doing it this way. This is just the way I like to do it. I just like the result for me. And this is how I do most of my paintings that have a any kind of galaxy thing going on. So notice I have built like this very yellow at the bottom, maybe a little bit of orangey tones coming in. And then as I move to the top, I want it to move away from the yellow. I want, so this is how I will kind of build in multicolors for a galaxy look. Now you could just stick with these three colors and just continue with this technique, fill the canvas and then put some trees on top of it or something and you're good to go. But I like to use, I'm just gonna use another filbert. It's the same size. It's a, this is a six filbert, but it's essentially the same size. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do a square too. So let's do the square because we've been working with the filbert. But once I move away from these orangey yellow colors, I like to create a little barrier between my color transition. So I would want like a lot of the colors around here to be more pink or even a little bit of like um, green or something near the yellow parts. So let's start with pink. I'm going to take red and also one thing I like to show people when we're doing the galaxy thing is that you can have your paint with no white in it. So if I just take pure red and put it here, notice how thick it is, how dark it is. But if I wipe the excess paint off my brush, and when I use a square brush, I just use the corner and I do the same thing. I rub. So I can use this. It doesn't really matter for me. I can use a square or a filbert. But if I rub the paint really thin, Notice how it almost looks like it's just more like pink, right? And then I can rub it into my other color that I'm transitioning from. So sometimes I'll just start with the pure color, rub it into the other color. There's some white here. It's going to start to rub into it. And that works really well. I can rub it down towards the yellow here. And I can leave some of it kind of thicker. And that thickness creates a different shade by just letting part of the paint stay thicker and thinning out the rest of it. I'm not adding any white at all. It's just thin. So sometimes just thinning your paint out will give you different shades in this particular effect as well. So you, you don't need to always use your white paint. Sometimes you can just use the thickness of your paint to create different shades which I do a lot. Because again, the way that I do it is just, it's just the way that I like to do it. It's not right or wrong. Like I'm sure some people would be like, oh, that's, there's another better way. And that's great. That could be working great for, for anybody. Um, but the, the whole point of creating is just doing what works for you. And I like to share what works for me. And oftentimes it works, you know, 
it either works really well for someone or maybe it doesn't, but it can lead to them figuring out what works for them. So you, by through experimenting and trying different things, we can figure these things out. Again, I'm just adding little bits of red and then spreading it around. I'm not even adding white yet. <laughs> but notice I'm taking it into the other color. This is a huge, another thing that people don't do when, the, when I watch them um, try is that they won't pull the color into the color next to it. You need to do that. And now we have a little bit of a border from our yellows and reds. And we can, if we got a little, sometimes when we blend down into the color prior, we can end up picking up some of that paint on our brush. So we can always just clean it. And then dry it. I don't like working with a wet brush for this because it can really make the paint harder to work with and layer. And then we can move into more like blues and purples and stuff. So I'm gonna take my blue. And just like I did with the red, I'm just using the pure blue at first. Sometimes it's fun to just randomly spread it around. <laughs> this drives the perfectionist crazy because of the, you don't like, I, I know I'm this way too. It's hard to just be random. We want like a formula. Let's see how I can just kind of come in, spread it around. This is actually really helpful to spread it around. That way you have that color. And then you can go in and add some white to your brush and go around. That way you're, you're kind of forcing yourself to spread the paint around and then plug the white in, in between, which will automatically give you some different shades as you layer. Now, the same thing with the blue coming into the red, I mean, next to the red, you want to mix the blue into the red a little bit around the edges. To create a transition. But see how far I'm pulling it down? I'm really pulling it in there. I'm not just leaving it on the edge. I'm pulling that blue down into the red, really letting it mix a little bit, which is going to create some purple. So it's okay. You just don't want to mix red blue and yellow all together. That's gonna start to create mud. So you do have to be careful when you're doing your galaxy. If you're really close, this is why I create a border of red to transition into the blue so that I'm not blending the yellow and red and blue all together. It creates a little bit of a border. So you have to be careful though, because there's some yellow right here. So if I pull the blue too far on that spot, it might work against me. So you just gotta know what you're working with. And this is just creating this almost like watercolor tie-dye effect. I just love it. So you can do this with any color combination. Like I could just use blue and red and white. I could just use the red and yellow and um, white. I could use blue and yellow and white. So you can really use any color combination, creating your primary or mixing your primaries to make a secondary. So you have at least three different colors you're working with and it's all good. Now, then you can always add more blue. Maybe on this side, I wanna pull in a little more yellow with my blue to create that green color a little bit on this side of the canvas. So I can use a little bit of blue, make like a turquoise color here, which is what I'm doing. I don't want it to be too green, but you can make it green if you want. And then rub that in. And you can kind of spread that throughout your color over here. 
careful not to get it into your red. <laughs> so just be careful. And if your brush gets carried away from you, which happens sometimes, or you get too much paint, clean your brush and dry it. And then start fresh. I'm going to switch back to the filbert, though. So just to play with that a little bit more. Sometimes you can even just take a clean and dry brush and go in and then spread the paint with that. So see how you can pull in a little extra yellow right here. Don't forget about creating three shades. Don't let it get too flat. So that's the other thing I notice a lot is that it will get too flat because you're over blending. And that is also not gonna really serve the, tech, uh, the, the look that you're trying to go for with the galaxy kind of thing. Or this could just be a pretty, like, sort of tie-dye background. It doesn't have to be necessarily for doing a galaxy. But then we can create some more purple, deliberate purple, and some darker shades. So at the top here, what I would do is just clean the brush, and then you can just use the red and blue by itself mixed together with no white. And then I can come in around the blue and create some darker shades. So usually if I'm working with like a galaxy type of maybe like a galaxy sunset vibe, I'll always put the darker colors towards the top here and I'll show you how we can layer in and make a little scene with it really quick. Very simple though. I'm not going to go too crazy on this today. Because, you know, we're just, we're just playing, we're experimenting, maybe learning something new. But little bits. Now, I like to leave the purple a little bit thicker because I want it to look darker. So, like I was showing with the red. And then if you notice how my paintbrush is running out, you can even just speed it along. and remove the paint and dry it all the way. And then use that clean dry brush to blend out the dark paint into the light paint. So sometimes just cleaning it and drying it, see how much easier it is to move the paint around and blend it now? Because what often happens is just always, almost always what I see is it's just too much paint. That's it. So this is a technique. It takes patience. So, you know, if you're looking for instant gratification, I don't know, this technique might not be your favorite for doing this. You might like prefer just kind of dabbing it with a sponge. But again, it's, you're not going to get the same result, though. You're not going to get sometimes make that extra effort is what creates a really cool result. So there's no way around it, which is one of the things I love about art. It's like you kind of have to put the effort in. But I'm going to come in with some more purple, no white, and just sort of let it be thick and kind of wiggle it in towards the top. And if I use heavy on the blue, but I still have a little bit of red, it's going to create just a darker shade of blue, which could look really cool with more like the green color over here. So it's just a tiny bit of red mixed in. But we're creating like a really fun... And remember, if you're having trouble with blending or you want to blend something out, clean and dry your brush 100% and then come in and blend it out. You can also use the towel to kind of smudge out extra paint. But today I'm just doing the brush technique, like how I use a filbert and a square brush to create this galaxy effect. Pull in a little extra red right here. So see how I can just dab in different colors, create some different shades. But you should see so many different shades. It looks so pretty. Now, once you have all that in there, I use the square brush to do some splattering to create some stars, and especially in the dark part of the scene. 
So I would get that square brush clean and dry. And to do spotter paint, you just I just dollop up a little bit of white. Put it in its place, you know, so you have your white paint. And I want to put it like in its own little space. So I'll scoop up some fresh white. Try not to have other colors mix in. Sometimes I do. <laughs> and then I'll take, you can take fresh water or, you know, usually it doesn't impact it too much if you use your dirty water. I'll add water one scoop at a time. Just dip the brush in the water, like gently like this, just dip it in and then bring it into that white until it's watery or maybe like milk. And then you really want to use a firm bristle with this. My my uh, square brush has a pretty firm bristle. You don't want a long bristle brush. Like, like notice how this brush is long bristles and they're loose. It's like, like they don't really snap back really fast. They kind of gently pull back. You want a short handled or a short bristled brush that snaps. You can even hear it. Like I'll even use this one because I feel like this is like the best one. And then you're just going to take that watery white into the bristles of the brush. Bring it really close to where you want it. And I usually kind of point the brush at the space and then just gently pull the bristles back. And that's going to give you some good splatter stars. And notice how you, they really are going to show up the most in your, the dark part of your canvas, but you can pull it all around. Now, another fun thing you can do in your galaxy is you do some finger paint. So sometimes you can just take some pure white on your finger and kind of pull it into the background a little bit, like, like a little squiggle. Just kind of pull it and then wiggle it and then sort of smudge it out. So you can do like smudging and finger painting to create some different textures. And you can also take your small round brush, clean and dry using the pure white. And then add some deliberate stars by poking the canvas in different spots. So I'm just poking around here. And then you can do anything you want with this kind of canvas. Like you have your like a galaxy basically kind of effect going on. You, we did a lot of the lighter colors, but you could do more of the darker colors if you want the whole thing to be dark. Usually I'll do it lighter in one section. That way that area that's lighter can be utilized for putting a silhouette or something because like some trees and then the trees are going to stand out more against this light color versus on that dark color. So you can even make sure it's a little lighter if you want. Come in, add some more light colors at the bottom. You know, you can always touch things up just using the filbert, adding some more white. This gives it more of a cloudy look. So now it looks even lighter at the bottom. So check your colors. Make sure they're not too dark if you're going to put a silhouette on top of it. And then you can go in and put a silhouette. So I can use the filbert or the square. I'm going to do the filbert still because I love the filbert. Especially for some reason I like using the filbert on the small canvas. Don't I don't know why. And then we can add a little silhouette. So with your black paint, I'm going to put some black paint on my palette. 
And all my paints are this paint. Liquitex Basics, that's all I'm using. All I'm using is the primary colors. So that's all I'm using in these videos. That's the plan. <laughs> and then you can create some, maybe some pine trees or something, because pine trees are kind of a popular thing. Um, usually it's fun to paint like a ground. So I can kind of come on the left, paint a little bit across. That's my ground. And then I can paint some trees. Um, I like to just start with the vertical line. Come up. And then in the middle, maybe I'm not going up so high. Make them all different sizes, though. I'll make this one go up really high for fun on the right. And maybe I'll have a little friend that's sort of tall, too, but not too tall. And then this one won't go up as high, but notice I'm not, I don't care if it's like that straight or whatever, you know, be loose. And then one thing I see people do with pine trees a lot, this was supposed to, I was only going to do a galaxy, but I want to put the pine trees in. I don't, you don't want to add your pine tree at the top of the line. You want to come down, leave a point, and then you can just tap the brush you can either curve your line up like a smiley face, or you can curve it down. <laughs> or you can do a little bit of both. But I just tap and pull, just tap the edge of the brush. And maybe leave some space between your bristles or be between your brush strokes. And make them come out a little wider as you come down. It's thinner at the top, and then it come you come down, and it gets thicker. And that's it. It's super easy. <laughs> and, um, you know... Again, leave a point, come down, leave some space between your brush strokes, and just tap and pull out further as you come down. So simple. I want to make this one a little taller. Feels too small. Tap, 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 and then pull out as you come down. Leaving a point. This is important. You don't want to go up too high. Barely touch, barely touch, barely touch. Maybe leave some gaps. All trees are different. So we don't want to, you know, make them all look too similar because that could look weird. And then this one. It's so relaxing to paint the trees. I love doing it. And you can do different brushes. I'm just using the filbert today for this one. There are days where I use the square brush. You can use a fan brush. So you can experiment. Make sure it's nice and pointy at the tip. Just barely touching the edge of the brush. You're just barely, barely touching. And then you're barely tapping at the top. You can even kind of pull it in a V shape if you want. You can either do a V or it could be, you know, it's, it's so up to you. Trees are different. And it's your tree. So how do you want your tree to look? Notice how this one's going to go off the canvas. And then I would just blacken the bottom.
And if you want to create a little more interest, you can always tap in another color on top. So sometimes if you want to take it further, you can always do that. Maybe you want to use like a turquoise color as a highlight or just green or just blue. I'm just going to use turquoise. <laughs> so it's like mostly blue with a little bit of yellow and then some white. Get it on your brush and then you can go in and tap like a little bit of that turquoisey color on the tips of maybe just like the side that's coming towards the light. So maybe I just put it a little bit on the left side. So slightly. And my paint's still wet, so it's gonna get a little black on it. If that bothers you, you can always wait for it to dry. You can also just skip this all together and have your painting be more just a silhouette. But it's fun to show that you can take it. You can just keep going. I mean, you can keep layering. Every little thing you add is going to give it a little more interest. If I'm doing it on the right, the trees on the left, I would highlight on the right side and then highlight on the left side of these ones because the light source is like brighter in the middle. And it's just little smudges so that you just see a little bit of a variety in the color, but it's so subtle, so subtle. And then you can do, you know, a shooting star, you can do a moon. Shooting stars are fun. You just kind of take the, take the white, find a star, and then, you know, be like, okay, I want this to be a shooting star. Just pull a little tail out really lightly coming up. Then it's a shooting star. If you don't like it, use your dark color from the background to either thin out the line or erase it. So I always tell people, experiment. I'm just thinning that line out a little bit. I feel like it got a little too thick. Um, you can do little things like this, little details, little fun additions. If I do a moon, I usually use a cap stamped in white, maybe just partially for a crescent moon. So I can go maybe in like this little area right here. I'm like trying to decide where I want it. Yeah, that'll work. And just stamp it. And then that becomes a foundation for a moon. So once you have the foundation, which is like a perfect circle right there, you can take a little round brush or something and make it thicker in the middle. So then you have a little crescent moon. And I like my moon to be bright around the edge and then it can be kind of more faded as you pull it in towards the center, as you blend the white in towards the center. So it's just a very delicate process. And then remember you can use this darker color from the background to clean up the edges. So if it gets a little crazy, you wanna clean up your edges, use the background color, whatever it is right where you're putting your moon. So it might be a little different for you. It's very easy to adjust it and play with it a little bit. Remembering that you can always paint things over, you can add more stars with just the little dots coming in. And then we're going to call it done. So we have a fun and easy galaxy and it's trees and a moon. You learned a lot, hopefully. And I'd love to see what you create. You can always reach out to me on my website, which is hello at wendyanderson.art, which is my email. Send me pictures of what you create. I love to get emails like that. It's so much fun. 
Um, and if you want to learn more about acrylic painting, I have like a full course where we really dive into the whys and the all of the fundamentals of creating and composing painting. So I hope to see you there in my course, which is just called Easy and Fun Acrylics. And have a beautiful day, and I hope to paint with you again soon. Thank you.